Hi folks, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 464, with a look at a little game called Dungeon Hack. Now, this game is uh, in the black box style, if you played Eye of the Beholder, uh, any of those games. The, I think they call them uh, blobbers. Uh, I don't personally use that term, but anyway. Uh, it's the first person perspective, like Dungeon Master, Eye of the Beholder. I kind of think of, about them as Dungeon Master likes. Uh, anyway, what makes this one interesting is that it's, uh, instead of having a pre-built dungeon it's got procedural dungeons just like rogue or a net hack or hack which i think is where they get the name uh, dungeon hack but it does have those ad and d rules built into it now it was uh, published by ssi but it was developed by another company named uh, dreamforge entertainment and apparently mostly by one guy and i'll read you uh, his quote here to, uh, once we get into the video but you can pick up both of these games, or <laughs> Dungeon Hack, with another game called Menzo Baranzan, which I want to cover in a future episode, uh, for $5.99 on goodoldgames.com. So if you want to, you can rush over there and pick that up, and you're good to go. And uh, just before we get started, I thought I would set things up by reading Scorpia a little bit from her review of the game back in Dragon Magazine. Glorious, don't you miss Dragon Magazine? Uh, but anyway, she had this to say, I guess back in 93 or 94, or somewhere around in there. Uh, talking about Dungeon Hack. She says, uh, while the game, or in spite of some weak points, Dungeon Hack delivers what it promises, the chance to create your own specially designed hack and slash paradise. She gave it three out of five uh, stars. Uh, so it's got some naysayers, but I think it's generally a well-received game. But anyway, we will take this video, uh, I'll take the chance here to dive into the game. We'll clear the first uh, level of the dungeon. See what it's all about and see if it's something worth uh, the money and your time uh, all these years later. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, here is Dungeon Hack. All right, folks, let's get into this. Uh, I went to go goodoldgames.com, as I want to do, uh, gog.com, and I was looking at these uh, Forgotten Realms archives. And there's three sets of these archives. And most of these I have played, the Eye of the Beholder games, of course, the Gold Box games. But there's a few here and there that, you know, for whatever reason, never really got around to. Maybe just booted them up, played them, you know, just, just looked at it for a few minutes. <laughs> I mean, you know how it is, guys. We've all got, like, millions of games, okay? Uh, it's just a matter of picking one to play. Uh, you know, and setting some time aside for it, basically. Uh, but this is the third volume of this archives, and it's 6 bucks or five ninety nine. And you get Menzo Baranzan and Dungeon Hack. And both of these games fit that category for me at least of games I've heard of never really played and I'm curious enough to want to uh, to play both of them so I went ahead and picked up this package $5.99 and you can't go wrong with that and I want to get into uh, Menzo Baranza probably next time uh, this time though I want to look at Dungeon Hack and I always get Dungeon Hack confused with another earlier product called uh, Unlimited Adventures uh, so that uh, Unlimited Adventures what that is is a uh, construction kit for the gold box games so you could basically make your own sort of pool radiance uh, pools of darkness style game and i'm very curious about that i definitely want to look at it at some point not to uh, create my own game per se although that might be fun uh, but apparently there's a large uh, collection or huge amount huge number of these modules that other people have created and i thought it might be fun to you know take a look at that uh, see what people have come up with because you know sometimes just some random uh, you know teenager in a basement basically teenager in the bedroom uh, can come up with a better game uh, than some of the professionals can you know that does happen uh, so I might take a look at that uh, in a future video but for now I want to look at Dungeon Hack and what this one is and I, I tell you I get it confused with Unlimited Adventures because when you think about Unlimited I think procedural generation uh, randomized elements to keep a game you know, playable forever, replayable forever. Uh, but that's not what that is. Dungeon Hack is actually what that is. And it's not the gold box. It's the uh, Eye of the Beholder or the Black Box engine. I think they call them bobbers or blobbers, something like that. Never quite understood that terminology. Uh, but it's that first-person viewpoint, Dungeon Master style, or Eye of the Beholder style, obviously. Uh, so it's, 
you know, I was looking at some of the reviews, uh, some of the FAQs out there about it, and it seems to have a pretty good reputation. You know, it's not for everybody, but it seems generally well received. Uh, the designer of the game definitely likes it. <laughs> you know, I guess that's a good sign. Uh, I was looking here at the manual, and at the at the end of the manual, you get some designer's notes, and I always love these. You know, just as somebody that likes uh, the history of role-playing games and likes to, uh, you know, dabble in game design, game development. You know, I always love it. It's like these are like the liner notes or the designer notes you might get on a CD or a movie. Uh, it's not, you know, that extensive here, but he does. This is a Tom Holmes who designed this and programmed it. And I don't know Tom Holmes. Uh, first time I think I've even seen the name. I don't know what else he's done. I don't know much about him. But I'd love to talk to him, just to talk to him about this game and what was going on at uh, SSI at the time. But as you can see, I mean, he says right there, Dungeon Hack is a fun game. <laughs> it's a fun game. Look, Tom says it's a fun game. The designer says it's a fun game, so it must be fun. Uh, but in all seriousness, he goes on in here about how, you know, if, if, if you have a game that's not a roguelike, so if you're playing Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, whatever, uh, you get you eventually you learn the dungeons you learn where everything's at it's not much fun to just keep replaying it over and over again you know it just kind of gets repetitive basically uh, the idea of a roguelike you just uh, have the computer basically make the dungeons for you you put some parameters in there and you know set it and, <laughs> and let it do its thing and then it spits out churns out this dungeon and no two dungeons will be exactly alike at least that's the the idea Sounds good in theory, but often in practice what happens is it, it's a little too obvious that it was a computer-generated thing. It's not quite as neat and tidy and as creative as a human, you know, as a professional designer would have come up with. So sometimes it feels kind of empty, kind of void of uh, character, kind of droll, I suppose. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. You know, he does talk in here, and I've talked to Glenn, uh, one of the creators of Rogue, uh, the original Rogue from, from way back in the day. And he says a lot of the same stuff here about this, you know, phenomenon, how if you make the roguelike, even though you designed the damn thing, you you programmed it. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, as you're playing it, sometimes things will happen and you're like, wow, this is this is weird. I didn't I didn't even anticipate that being in the game. It's almost like it becomes a, like a mutant Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> it's like, you know, surprising even the people that, that made it. Uh, and then there's, I don't know what this is about. Some Corporate Spew by Jim Nemeska. You know, it's, this is kind of funny. This is, you know, what was this, 1993? Yeah, this is like basically the breakdown of uh, SSI. I think they're kind of getting close to losing their license at this point from the uh, TSR company. And it's going to be sort of going downhill pretty quick after this. And this company... You know, they say, with SSI's publishing and EA's distribution of our games, <laughs> yeah, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, the first two games, The Summoning and Veil of Darkness, had both received high praise from the industry. Uh, so I haven't played those games either. I need to go and maybe do some videos on those. But, you know, as far as I can tell, you know, I was pretty, I was an active gamer by this point in the, uh, sort of getting close to the mid-90s. Uh, I noticed that a lot of the, you know, things were, I guess people were kind of bored with uh, SSI and these gold box games. They never really seemed to, you know, after the Eye of the Beholder series, they seemed to really struggle to try to hit that mainstream audience again. You know, these games usually aren't held up very high. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into it and see what we, we think. And then uh, one other thing before we dive in. You do want to have the manual handy because, again, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's not spelled out in the game itself. Not as bad, not nearly as bad as last time. <laughs> we kind of had to keep the manual there on the screen at all times. Uh, we won't need the gold box companion for this, obviously. There's a, an automat built in. Uh, but there's still some stuff that you probably want to know. You probably want some tips on. For example, they, this FAQ here. You don't really have to worry about spoilers, you know, with a roguelike, right? You just want to read these to get some tips, figure out what not to do, or some ways to make your life a little easier. And one of the things I mentioned in here that I intend to follow is to make a either a straight-up cleric or a fighter-cleric combo, a hybrid, cross-character, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take that advice because I noticed on my first playthrough it was taking me forever to heal up. 
So we'll see what happens. I, I want to have some magical spells. I think that would add a little bit of variety. Unfortunately, you only get one character in this game. You know, that kind of stinks. I, I love a... You know, I much prefer games where you get to make a whole party. So that's a limitation. And some of the other things in here, you know, I don't want to spoil... Uh, there's no reason to dive in here too much. Uh, there, are, there are a few things like the coins. I, I found these coins. I had no idea what they were. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we'll find some uh, some kind of slot machine, vending machine type situation where we could put these coins in and get heals and status uh, cures, so that's good to know. And I think that's about really all we need to know. You know, the rest of this stuff is just like cheating and some, some background info. But if you want to read this fact, it's by D. Simpson. Oh, so the update of this is la as late as 2009. Yeah, Dan Simpson. You know, I always like to point these out because everybody uses these things, you know, but you hardly ever give credit. You hear the name of the person that went to all this trouble to make these these documents and just put it out there for free. <laughs> you know, so I wanted this. I don't know who Dan Simpson is, but thank you, Dan. Really appreciate your hard work. It's very useful. Okay, I'm going to stop this, get the game up, and we'll jump in. Okay, here we go. Hear the nice music. There's only music in the first part, so I'll just let it play. Watch the little intro movie. What is going on here? <laughs> Do you see this? Oh, okay. Be a great DM. Hey, no, wait, no, wait! Yeah, that's kind of a kind of vaguely Conan like. The Orb of Yendor. It's Castle Grayskull. I love that artwork though. That's some great pixel art. Good animation too. Remember this is 1993, so you probably would have been blown away by the digital effects. <laughs> Get back in there. Welcome to the Mad Cave. I want this Bring castle. On your worst, dungeon. I am ready. All right, there we go. You see, that was pretty cool, man. <laughs> uh, that was uh, <clears throat> pretty cool. <clears throat> that is Amulet of Yendor, right, from the original Rogue game. <clears throat> All right, let's see. We can choose a character. Let's just take a look at this. Uh, I usually do this sometimes when I'm doing my uh, 
you know, for some, for some reason I'm wanting to call these like stripping runs and spirit runs. <laughs> I don't know where this is this is coming from, but you know sometimes when you play a game, you just kind of want to jump in right away and you know and see what see what's going on and then come back later uh, after you've done that and really slow down and focus and you know make a lot of choices for yourself. There's so many analogies that I've been I'm like the analogy man lately. I've been thinking about everything from beer brewing to uh, <laughs> gardening. <laughs> you know, I always post this stuff on Twitter as it occurs to me, but. You know, I think all of these different creative fields uh, have a lot in common. It's, they can learn from each other if you uh, learn both. Let's see, Catherine Shop. What is up with these names? <laughs> Fat Zahn, Axe Maiden, Catherine oh, Shallow Taint. <clears throat> <Yeah. laughs> I don't know if they're just kind of like tongue and tongue and cheeking some of these names or what. Uh, let's see, female elf neutral evil mage. I got a Nemus uh, Molten Gale neutral good mage. You know, pretty good. Uh, it's like quite a few characters here. Pretty good uh, backstories, too. Like many less scholastically inclined elves, Levertus chose the life of a war. He believes society advances at the point of a sword. <laughs> Levertus, I like that. Uh, Targon Hawk, lawful good ranger. You can get a look at, at their stats, see how they're breaking those down. So that guy's really strong. Uh, who else do we have? Umric Halfblood, chaotic neutral fighter mage. Half, a male elf chaotic good fighter. Vampire Hunter, apparently. Uh, female Elf Lawful Neutral Flatter. Glorantha Steel Rain. You know, I always just, I always for some reason go back to dwarves. I'm kind of on this dwarven kick lately. I don't know what's, what's the, why. Here's a cleric. Okay, so yeah, you can look at these. Let's see if we can find a, yeah, here's a, here's a fighter cleric. Uh, so let's see how they did their stats there. So the strength, wow, this, uh, this, is a, this is a half elf, really strong half elf. Look at that, eighteen ninety percentile. Intelligence is low, <laughs> as is mine apparently. Uh, wisdom is seventeen. So I always think clerics. I think wisdom. So that's high. Strength is high. <clears throat> Constitution's a little bit. Eh. Levels two or three. So I guess. This is kind of what I want to shoot for when I create my character. But what I want to do is just... Oh, crap. Did I select that character? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can I get back out of that? Let's see if I can exit out. Oh, it looks like I'm stuck with that. Okay. Uh, I wanted to create my own character. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to exit out the program and restart it. It's a nice thing about... These early games, it's only a couple of seconds to load. It takes longer to sync to the GOG cloud than it does to load the game. Let me just hit escape out of that. Okay, so there's your first lesson. Don't go to create character. Don't go to choose character because you can't back out. All right, create character. Here we go. So it looks like, what is this? Is it a point by a system? That's, okay, we can, uh, yeah, fighter cleric. Let's go with that. And then I guess, let's just see if we can manually do this. There we go. Well, let me go all the way up. I think I was like 90. I feel kind of bad just giving myself perfect scores. So you can hold it down. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to 90. Let's get the wisdom up to, what was it, 17, I think, on his. I'm going to go 18. <laughs> you know, I want an 18 constitution, too. This is probably a little bit <clears throat> too strong of a character, but eh, what the hell. Uh, let's see. Male. We can go dwarf. 
Usually dwarves have a poison resistance, right? I'm kind of, you know, a gnome is kind of fun too. I like gnomes. I feel like I'd probably either, in real life, I'd either be a gnome or a dwarf. <laughs> Maybe halfling. <laughs> Alignment, lawful, neutral, chaotic for sure. Good, neutral, evil. You know, I, I can never bring myself to be evil. I'm just not an evil guy. <laughs> uh, choose your face. All right, so we don't have that gold box thing where you're, like, matching up heads and bodies. So why do I go with the dwarf? This one, I kind of like the mustache there. Uh, this is this is what I, I think of, though, when I think about it, a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. uh, enter the name. Matthias the Dwarf. All right, looks like we're in. Uh, look at that. Isn't that the, that's the Dungeon Master's Guide cover art. I always love this. Easy, moderate, hard, custom. You know, custom, let's take a look at that. You know, one of the things that the reviewers were mentioning about this game that they liked was that you could turn off all the stuff you find annoying. And so, for example, if you don't like those anti-magic zones or whatever, just, you know, flip the switch. Make your monsters, give yourself more food. Um, it's basically like a game editor here. I kind of just like leaving it on the default settings, though. Let's see, set to moderate. Oh, so we could compare. I think the hard mode, yeah, the character death is like permadeath on hard mode. But you could go hard and then turn off that, you know, parts you don't like. So I won't spend too long. There's your random seed. So if you, I guess you could write that down if you wanted to give your friend the exact same <clears throat> seed or you want to play this exact same level again. It's kind of interesting just looking at this, that the parameters they thought you might want to change. <laughs> Pit frequency. <laughs> and this is, you know, I like this idea. If there's, if there's something, some aspect that you just can't stand, you know, just turn it off. It's kind of a... Uh, you have to get away, get out of that mindset of what does the designer want me to do, and instead try to think about <clears throat> yourself and what's fun for you. All right, loading up the dungeon. All right, and here we go. I already got a key. I have to get a little bit closer. Now, there's a couple ways to move. Uh, one of the things that <coughs> I like about this. Uh, set up here is you can control everything just with the mouse. I know I mentioned this before, but it's, it's kind of nice when you play in a game where you can do everything with the mouse, because that way you can have a cup of coffee or a beer, <laughs> your ale, you know, over in your other hand, and just you're just controlling everything with your right. So that's kind of fun. But I think you can also control this with the uh, number keys. It's like I'm in the snot caverns or something. Look at that. It's like melted wax. Not sure what that's supposed to look like. Uh, but if I use the number pad here, then I can use uh, 7 and 9 to kind of turn. If I'm trying to just use the arrow keys, it, it assumes I want to step to the left. I don't know if there's something I can tweak to change that. Uh, let's see. So we want to go into the camp mode to look at our spells. Okay. What does this say? The zero of four available. So what does that mean? Oh, so he's already got some spells memorized. He's got his uh, four cure light wounds, no detect magics, no detect pits, invisible to undead. So, wow, he's already got two tiers of spells, looks like. This is level two spells. Yeah, I've heard this uh, hold person. I don't know why that's... Let's just try these out. But I've heard that the... Spiritual Hammer is actually pretty awesome in this game. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. I'll show you uh, the interface. <clears throat> uh, so this is our puppet. This is always on the screen. You know, one of the complaints about the game is we, we got this kind of little window. It's not that big. I mean, uh, some of the other games from this era had much bigger. I mean, you had a... I'm pretty sure even uh, Ultima Underworld had a bigger viewport than this, but... 
you know it is what it is they put a lot of stuff over here like your character sheet we can toggle between that and the stats page see what your experience looks like uh, food so we have the old good old food meter we'll have to keep an eye on see it's just ticking down this is in real time I suppose uh, this is our symbol that we need to cast spells with I believe and I think you just yeah you do that and then you cast spells that way and then you just like in dungeon master or I have the beholder will just click that to, to swing Let's see, there is somewhere here. Yeah, here's our auto map here. And if we right click on it, <clears throat> it shows us the full map. And here we can, you have your key that records everything, and then we could print this. <clears throat> so I think that's a pretty neat feature. You know, I like the idea of, uh, you know, basically just uh, you letting the algorithm create the dungeon, but you could reuse that somehow later. All right, let's uh, get into it then. <coughs> the oh. Yeah, this has definitely got that Dungeon Master feel to it. You hear things, you're not sure where it is. Let's see, someone or something really wanted to get into the hole here. Or maybe it was trying to get out. A little creepy. You know, one thing I gotta say I don't particularly like about the game is it's kind of hard to see like what are the stats on these things. You know, I could pick it up and put it back down, but you know, it'd be much nicer if it would uh, at least have like an info screen <laughs> telling me, you know, what these things are. Oh, here we go. So that looks like a monster. So boom, click. He's dead. He's down. A puddle of water formed on the floor here. It is extremely cold to the touch. Oh, we already got another creature. Why don't we try our hold person spell? Did it work? It's like it didn't work. Let's try it again. He's still coming. There we go. <laughs> it only took uh, three tries, but he's held now. And we can kill him that way. So I thinking that's probably not going to be our number one spell what is this an amulet so we really got no idea like what is this amulet <clears throat> we could try to detect magic on it oh a halberd I wonder if a halberd is a I don't know if a halberd is a two-handed weapon I'm also not sure if we ever get to a place where we can sell things. You know, some of these games, there's no vendors. Now, let's go ahead. We can check our stats. Let's see. So, 18, 15, 18, 12, 19, 10, 5. Okay, it lets me take it off. So I guess it's not cursed. 18, 15. Is that doing anything? Uh. You know, I have no idea if that's helping at all. <laughs> I don't see any changes. Might give some kind of resistance, or I guess it could just be for decoration. I am not very impressed with that. With that, uh. That's our turn that dead. I was not impressed with hold person. Let's continue. What is going on here? Uh, this tapestry depicts a valiant warrior standing over his defeated enemy. I just hope that I <clears throat> am as victorious as he. All right. A little bit of flavor, I suppose. Get rid of this. I need to see my map again. Cancel. This door won't budge. And there's our key. You need a key to open the lock. And there's our... Let's try the halberd on him. Six points of damage. You know, I wonder if this game auto levels this up. Level two and three. Yeah, I mean, they don't give you as, as much information there as they should. <clears throat> Again, I guess the idea is you're always supposed to be looking at the manual to see, well, how many XP do I need for... <laughs> The next level. 
bet you anything there's little secrets in here. Okay, let's move a little further. You know, that is a problem, I guess, with these kind of procedurally generated games. Often you'll get into a secret area and there just won't be anything there worth looking at. <laughs> what is that? Stairs up? Yeah, so we found the key and got in there, but big whoop. It is too dark to see what lies beneath the grate. Ooh, what is that guy? He gone now. I think I read that the, there's only two kinds of monsters on each level, <clears throat> and then a third that's, that'll be the boss. Okay. Ooh, look at those stalactites. Because <laughs> they're on top. Oh, is this a switch? What is that switching? Oh, okay. That's easy enough. You know, I wonder if this thing is sophisticated enough to have like those puzzles where you have to open up one door over here, walk around the other way to open, throw the switch on the other side, you know. Sort of mist like experience. What is that little, there's like a little button here by the door. Okay, so that one opens up that way. And then we have a, a key. Okay, we're making good progress here. Uh, that one, oh, there's a little <laughs> cleverly hidden. Oh man, we got a bunch of monsters in here though. <clears throat> now, let's see, are they gonna come to me? you come here you chop you oh crap I wonder if there are any rats in this thing oh, what is it oh what the f another one jeez oh he's gonna kill me oh okay we I need to rest up Let's see, beast, I should hope that it, look at the size of the teeth on that thing. Well, I see no reason to stick my hand in there. Okay, I wonder if I could chop it. No. Okay, so we need to rest up, I think. Yeah, I guess I got no spells left. Is that what that means? Is that one that's colored? Oh, maybe I can't use this halberd. Yeah, because I have to have a hand free. Oh, I need a hand. I'm reminding you. Alexa, stop. stop. Oh, Alexa. I'm reminding you. Okay, Alexa, stop. Oh, hang on. I'm reminding you. Kombucha. Alexa, stop, please. Uh, let's see, we've got our magic symbol there. Let's see if I can cure a couple of times. <laughs> She's like really reminding the hell out of me. <laughs> okay, let's see about this <clears throat> resting mode. Okay, yep. Pray for spells. Yeah, let's get rid of the stupid whole person. I want to do the spiritual hammer because I heard that was a good one. Let's just go, uh, let's just go three of those. And I guess the, I kind of want to have a detect magic, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> bless would probably be pretty useful, too. I don't know how long it lasts. Why don't we sneak one bless in there? Okay, then we can just rest. Four hours, five. Fully rested. Bada boom, bada bing. We can even save it here. Matthias. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try that spiritual hammer. You gotta have at least one free hand. Okay. Wasted one of my spells. That sucks. Alright, there we go. We got a spiritual hammer now. That's exciting. Oh, and I already got somebody to try it on. 
Oh, it's like Thor's hammer, I guess. It comes back to me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Got our key. Picking up all these keys. This is a game about keys and switches and weird crap on the wall. I think we've... Ex oh, no, there's a... Another door. Is this the one we came in? No, we haven't explored that yet. Okay. Man, I love the... Once you get spoiled with these auto maps, you just don't ever want to go back. <laughs> here we go. Let's hit him with our spiritual hammer. Oh, man, I feel like Thor in here. Spiritual hammer's awesome. I wonder what the range is on that. Another one of these onk looking keys. Another one of those things. Uh, whoa, what is that? What the hell is that? I'll never make it through here. I'll have to find another way. Huh. What what is that? Statue? That is pretty freaky. Yes. Oh, he opened it. Oh, did it hit him on the way back? <laughs> oh, I guess these automatically. I didn't know the monsters could open up those doors. That's pretty neat. Man, that spiritual hammer is worth its weight. Definitely worth learning that spell. Now, let's see if I can use it at range. Boom! Check that out! I guess it missed. No, nope, still hit him. <laughs> so it looks like it's getting him on the way back. I guess it missed that time. Nope. Man, what a great spell. Okay. That's a good reason to be a cleric right there. Okay. I keep hearing some sound. It's only somebody's clearing their throat. <laughs> One of my grandparents, you know, always making those sounds. There's <laughs> another one. I have a spiritual hammer. Catch him. Man, that looks weird. I wonder how many different tile sets there are in this game. The one I was playing on my uh, that Amazon Warrior, hers looked a lot more like a traditional dungeon with the stone work. What is that? Oh, another one of these Conan. Oh, crap, crap. Probably heal up after this. All right. <clears throat> back you know it looks like our uh, our spiritual hammer I don't know how long it lasts it's still going good I'm gonna go ahead and do the bless see how long that lasts of course it doesn't let's see is that the did you have a gold outline before <laughs> I don't know I just have to see how long that spell lasts I guess can't get through that way. Man, those things are weird looking. Do, do, do. All right, there's looks like a yeah, key. Man, somebody really liked that art. <laughs> Let's put it everywhere. another one and there's that guy another key <laughs> that was easy <laughs> you know I'm guessing it's not going to be this easy as we get deeper into this dungeon I'm just uh, oh I tried to destroy the cone in 
No, just a vandal. Oh, jeez. Come on. Got him. <clears throat> Let's check out. So I'm still level two and three. I'm guessing those, uh. I'm guessing I got a long ways to go before I level up. Usually the way it works in these games, if I recall correctly, is I'll get a level in the cleric and then a level in the fighter. Back and forth. Alright, so it looks like I can go... Can I go north here? Oh. Looks like another dead end. You know, you can sort of see why people like these roguelikes because, you know, probably a real developer, a real level designer probably wouldn't have all these dead ends and like a key right next to the door and so on. So it does make it a little bit harder to predict. Now let's see, creatures. Where do I need to go? There's the stairs up. Or stairs up. I need to find the stairs down. Looks like I need to go back the way I came. Or maybe I can go that way. Kind of a little bit hard to tell. Yep. Oh, my spiritual hammer's gone. Oh, <laughs> let's get that back. Oh, this is bad. There we go. Get the hammer back. Man, I love that it hits him on the way back. <laughs> that's, just, that's great, but I guess it does, uh, does have a time limit on it. Be poking around for too long. Of course, uh, I don't think the game punishes you for resting like a lot of these games do. Just, you run out of food eventually. But I'm pretty sure this guy can even create his own food. I want to say I saw that somewhere. Don't quote me on that, but... Okay, let's get back to the map. Now let's go north. Take the next left. There is an illusionary wall straight ahead. Oh. Well, that's pretty cool. Found an illusionary wall. A little secret room, but <laughs> there's a whole lot of nothing in here. Well, maybe this would be a good time to rest. Let's go ahead and go back to camp. All right, I don't have... I don't know how long these spells last is a problem. Probably just a couple of minutes. Let's... Yeah, that's good. I don't see that create food spell, so maybe I don't have that yet. What we can do, though, is just rest. Shall I cast healing spells? Yes. All right. Let's get our... Maybe I'll wait until we actually see monsters before I waste our spiritual hammer. Give a little bit more time that way. Yeah, okay, keep going. We need to go a couple of ticks north. Actually, can I move from this screen? <laughs> That'd be just too convenient. Yeah, that'd be somebody should mod the game to just to let you move it uh, on this map screen. Okay, let's go north. Is there something there? Oh man, there's two of these things. Where did they come from? This wall seems funny somehow. Ah, there's another secret. That's pretty cool they were able to make a... Oh, this is a long corridor. I'm starting to see the limitations of the spiritual hammer. <laughs> it's got to get all the way back to me. There we go. 
Not what you want in a long corridor. I think that's pretty clever just to make a algorithm that would put secret walls in there. Yeah, but it makes somewhat sense. Okay, what else? There's another one. I like that this map shows you the monsters. So you don't have to just keep looking back and forth. What is this? That's a weird looking lock. Key won't fit in the lock. Man, give that guy some uh, throat medicine. Give him a cough drop. For God's sake, have mercy on these monsters. Got some bracers. Cool. Let's see what these bracers do. So, all right, so 18, 15, his AC is what? Five? Let's see, where do these go? Uh, let's see, AC is now five, so I guess that didn't do anything. Do I, did I get the detect magic spell? Yeah, it looks like they're magic. Both of these things are. Look at that. I just don't have any clue what they do. <laughs> uh, I guess we just have to hope for the best. Put these bracers on, I dare you. Which way am I pointing there? I need to go, I think, back west. Can't get through there yet. Oh, okay, I need this, some kind of skull looking key, I guess. And I don't know how to get in. Oh, there's a switch. Okay, yeah, there you go. I have a spiritual hammer. It's a blue one. <laughs> yeah, keep it coming. Have one, two. What the hell is that thing? Grappling hook. All right. Oh, you. Oh, nice. Just here trying to explore. Gauntlets. Where do you put gauntlets? Oh, I guess I have to have one or the other. Strength 19. Oh, that raises up my strength. So I don't know what those uh, bracers do, but I know that raises my niche. I think I'd rather have the strength boost. Cool. Hammer don't hurt him. Actually, hammer do hurt him. Okay, so we can't get through there yet. We need to find a skull key. I'm thinking maybe down in here somewhere. Cobwebs. One might expect to find them in a dungeon such as this. <laughs> yes, one might expect to find cobwebs in a place like this. Well, <laughs> gotta be a way out of here, man. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking going back out. That cast of throat clearing is <laughs> it's making me like congested, I swear to God. <laughs> like ever since I started playing this, I feel like 
I need a, I need a lozenge. Yeah, hang on, I'm going to get a lozenge and be right back. All right, that's better, man. For these kind of hauls, you need hauls. <laughs> the menthol solution. Let's see, current level 1 of 18. What does this do? Show numbers. Show bar graph. Yeah, I guess there you go. Show creature totals. I've killed 22 hobgoblins already? Wow. 18 orcs. C. Nova. 113. Sprig. Mario. Elizabeth. Zazo. I wonder what's this. I wonder if this is just randomly generated names. Maybe some of the folks at SSI were playing this. That'd be pretty fun. Maybe those are the playtesters. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's get back to it. I'm going to go ahead and heal up a little bit, I think. Yeah, I do like this this fighter cleric. I think this was a good choice. I think that was good advice. Okay, where do we want to go here, folks? I think up. <laughs> Never been too good at mazes. <clears throat> Oh, our spiritual hammer expire. I'm gonna go ahead and cast one. I just want to have that ready. Oh, there's another one. Have we? Oh, the lock is open. Good, good, good. Okay. No, can't get through there, but we can go around it. All right. What is that thing? A chamber pot? <laughs> you have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> oh, rations. Oh, yeah, I need some rations. Thank you, now that you've mentioned it. Yeah, it's courteous. You know, so nice of these... People think these monsters are just these evil creatures. And, you know, they're so nice to just leave a bag of rations there for me. They don't hate me. <laughs> they don't want me to be... Yeah, they're, they got hospitality. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you, but you know, here have a have a bag of cookies. Whoa! <laughs> Man, is that detect magic spell still going? Wow. A dogwood wand. Uh, take me to dogwood. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'd, I guess if I was a mage, I could identify these items. Well, it's some kind of. How do you use it? I wonder. Probably have to use my put it down there. <clears throat> I don't like just randomly trying items. Always a bit risky. <clears throat> well, let's see there need to yeah try to get down in there I think so around the corner and then south yes oh that's just that statue yeah all right so he's got me blocked that way yeah there's some more stuff to the to the west. There's that skull thing again. Am I supposed to do something to that? Looks like I just need a key. All right, so I can't go that way. Can't go that way. There must be a secret around here. All right, we can go north. 
and west. Kill this little guy. I think he's been in the bath too long. This carving appears to be that of some sort of winged beast. I should hope that it only exists as a carving. <clears throat> oh, oh, where? Ouch, Jesus. Man, that was painful. I'm a little bit low on HP, to be honest with you. I might need to rest again. Yeah, it does appear that that border... Okay, that's that's nice. So it, it's got a visual indicator of my bless. So at least I know that's working. Let's go ahead and eat some more food. Okay, good, good, good. You know, though, I think I have already... I can go south, okay. I don't know what's up with these columns. Am I supposed to do something to that? <clears throat> no idea. There's a button, but I think I've already pressed it. Yeah. Okay, I need to go either west or east, actually. Let's try west. Ooh, what's this? <coughs> Magic longsword? <coughs> I wish I could have both. Oh, well, that's a magical longsword. Something seems to be missing here. What do you think goes in there? A gem, maybe? Looks like kind of a socket. There's a, a little button. There's some more magical stuff. What is this? Protection from magic scroll taken. Protection from magic. Guessing I'll need that when I get to fighting some wizards or some kind of spellcasters. Can I cast my spiritual weapon through the door? I don't know. Is it going through the door? Doesn't look like it. That's too bad. Oh, what was that? Oh, my spiritual hammer expired. Are we out of spiritual hammer? Got one more. <clears throat> I wonder if that lasts longer as I level up. So it looks like if I just go straight here, there's something there. Oh, there's some keys. God, did I miss these keys before? <clears throat> What the, what, what is it? Oh, the topaz. Okay, I think I know where that goes. Now let's go back and try the top. Uh, is that one open? No, okay, that one's open. Jeez, where was that topaz? I was just there. Oh my god. Okay, I'm just exploring everything. Doesn't seem to be anything in here, though. Uh, let's see. We'll go down there. Now I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say I probably need to explore every little piece of this <coughs> map. Okay, where was that topaz? Shit, I see. Doors. Maybe that. There we go. Yeah, let's try this. Bet you this works. Boom. I have a spiritual hammer. Oh, no, don't kill me. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I got to rest again. That's too much damage. I don't want to. Is this room clear? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab this key, and then... Oh, there's the bone key. All right, let's rest again.
This doesn't seem like a great place to rest. Too many monsters around. Oh no. I don't want to die here. I got him. Alright, can I rest now? Yes. <coughs> Alright. Go ahead and save it again. So we're doing pretty good. I think I'll get off this dungeon then. Oh jeez, I need to get my weapon. Did I go through multiple enemies? Was it missing him? I wonder if I can like quickly switch to my longsword. I saw another enemy in there. And you can't beat that spiritual hammer. That is a great weapon. <clears throat> great spell. I use a lot in my uh, tabletop game, too. A tabletop game, you know, they want you to name what your spiritual weapon looks like. <clears throat> so I always tell them it's a, uh, it's a fish. <laughs> like in Mighty Python, they slap each other with the fish. Uh, so I call mine the Holy Smackerel. Let's see. It's a pretty big. I mean, this is just level one, folks. Look at this. <laughs> it looks like a, you know, really well done dungeon. I mean, I've played plenty of games that didn't have a this good of a dungeon layout. This is just procedurally generated. I mean, it's pretty. Clever. Certainly no easier to navigate. Okay, we need to go sh straight through. There's a monster. I have a hammer. You know, I'm not finding a whole lot of food, though. You notice that? That might be what ends up getting you. Just never. Not enough food. Yeah, I guess when you have a long corridor like this, you could just throw your hammer down. Hit whatever's at the end of it. And look at this, I could just... Did I actually hit him? Did I actually kill that monster just by throwing my hammer? Whoa, look at that! Yeah, it's, it's almost like oh, overpowered, really. Here's another one of these niches. I don't know if I'm supposed to put something in there. Is it just like a handy storage? And there's the stairs out of here. Can't seem to go that way. Oh, this is the way out of the dungeon. Jeez. I <laughs> circled all the way back. Okay. No, I don't. Yeah, that's probably... I don't think we're quite done with this video yet. we got to get off this first floor anyway. All right, let's get back to... I think here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've been in here yet. Oh. Was it Dungeon Master where you could close the doors on people? Remember that? <clears throat> I wonder if that works in this game. Alright, so I got some of those skull keys. I just need to... There's a blue key. Yeah, there's the skull key. Okay, that... That's going to unlock that, I bet. Got to be ready, though. Let's do it. Two of them. Three of them. It's like they dropped something. A throwing dagger. 
Oh, oh, there's a bunch of mobs in here. You know, I want to try something here. Let's see, can I? Um, can I do this? Let's try this out. Uh, I wonder if I can throw the, the hammer and the knife. Is there nothing in here? Oh, I guess I can't go out that way. I'd have to go the long way around. I think, though, I've pretty much explored this whole area. Looks like there was a monster in here somewhere. Yeah, let's try it out on him. Let me get some rage. Where do you go? Let's try the hammer, the knife. All right, there's a little strategy. Might be an easier way to do that, but I could throw the hammer. But I have to put this in my... Oh, I think I have to have that to be able to uh, cast the spells. There we go. You know, I'm going to go ahead and do that, uh, that bless. Okay. Let's see. Can we get off this level? Looks like I need to go north, back out of here. I'm guessing these monsters are just randomly spawning. Oh, lost my... The only bad thing about that spiritual hammer, man, you have to watch it and make sure it's still active. What my AC is at, or my uh, experience, probably like five or six thousand to get to the next level. Just, just my guess. Oh. I've certainly been killing a lot of those guys. Oh, back here. Okay, what are we doing? So I can't get through there? I guess not. I think I got enough keys now, though. I should be able to just get out of this level. Again, though, it's pretty impressive how well constructed this dungeon is, considering it's just algorithms. You know, if you didn't know that, you'd probably just think this was, you know, just a, a dungeon in Maya the Beholder or something. Let's try to go. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I think I need to turn around. Yeah, let's try this way. I think there's the skull doors here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, skull key. Interesting. Yeah, I feel the urge to save the game. <laughs> no, no. Sometimes you just have that feeling. There's another door. Shift the map. I know there's at least. Yeah, I bet you that stairway is. Whoa, what is that? This must be the boss. 
He's <laughs> gone now. Slay living? That's a pretty powerful spell. There's a helmet. Uh, what is that thing? A shield? You know, unfortunately, I don't think I can use the shield on a, this guy, right? I, I think I won't be able to cast spells with that on. Gee, a bunch of, bunch of crap here, Jesus. Okay. What is that? I wonder what that slot is for. Oh, key. I can't fit that in the slot. You ever have that problem? Oh, maybe this is where the this coin comes into play. Yeah, there we go. So that's the silver orb. That's what they're talking about. So you put the orbs in there, and then it heals you up. All right, folks. So there you go, really. Let's take a gander at his stats again. 19, 15, 18, 12, 19, 10... Yeah, that helmet gives me better AC. Uh, yeah, I think we just hit the intro there. <clears throat> Correct. Thanks to God. Let's see what this next level looks like before we go. Mattius attains fighter level 3, gaining 3 hit points. Yeah, and you can see this dungeon looks different. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop it here because, I mean, it is <laughs> a dungeon hack. You know, you go to, I think it's something like 10 levels, and then you get the orb and uh, beat the game. But I will leave that for you to do. Uh, I think the time, though, has come to review the game. Uh, so what do I think about it? Uh, I played a lot of roguelikes. Uh, you know, Net Hack, for example. Uh, or original Hack. Of course, the original Rogue. Uh, as well as the Eye of the Beholder games. Let's see if I can get that sound effect off. Maybe I just mute. <laughs> okay. So the question is, is that, is this more fun or as fun? Let's start with this. Is it more fun than, I'm going to have to turn that sound off. Uh, yeah, turn sounds off. There we go. So is this more fun than... Uh, Eye of the Beholder, I'd say no. <laughs> you know, plain and simple, you have a lot more fun with the Eye of the Beholder games. Uh, how does it hold up compared to, like, NetHack or something? I mean, obviously you have the nicer audio visuals here. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's, there's bound to be. I just can't think of any right off the top of my head. Other rogue-like blobber games that are in this format. You know, is there anything that's sort of like this with the procedural generation uh, with this, this sort of early 90s uh, Eye of the Beholder Dungeon Master style interface? There's probably some other games like that. I'm just not thinking of them off the top of my head. Uh, I'm kind of curious now, but you know, you, you if you guys know, let me know if there's anything out there that's sort of like this but better. Uh, I would say... Um, you know, to me, this is different enough. It doesn't feel like playing NetHack or Hack or Barn or something like that. Uh, I really enjoy those games. I think part of what I like about them, though, is just the the primitive interface. You know, there's just something kind of appealing about the ASCII or the ANSI graphics. It feels very different. It's just something that I like to do every now and then. Uh, I do like this, uh, you know, interface better, I think, um... Maybe not better, but, you know, it makes it feel different enough than one of those games to where you, you're kind of intrigued by it. Uh, honestly, the... Other than, like, there's not much story here, obviously. You know, you're getting an orb. Big deal. <laughs> uh, so other than stuff like that, uh, just in terms of the dungeon layout, you know, it feels pretty well done. We've got a big dungeon here to explore. You know, it would have been great. I wonder if they ever used this technology in, in the Eye of the Beholder games or... You know, some of those other products we were looking at just to make like a, a random level or a dungeon somewhere where you could just go to grind. You know, that would work pretty well for this. Uh, but, I, you know, I'd, I'll say this. If I didn't know this was procedurally generated, I don't know if that would be clear to me. You know, if I was just wandering around this dungeon, I didn't know what I was, you know, I hadn't read the manual, didn't know anything about the game. I might just think it was a, you know, a fairly basic uh, dungeon, but... It's got illusionary walls, I guess, teleporters at some point. Uh, pits, I don't like pits. 
<laughs> pillars, windows, arches. I mean, it all feels uh, pretty pretty well done. Just, you know, it feels well programmed. It doesn't feel, uh, at least at this point, doesn't feel like really predictable or you can really see the sort of strings, if you will. Uh, I like the the interface. It's it's okay. You know, it is it is what it is. If you like Eye of the Beholder, Dungeon Master, you know, it would be very familiar to you. Now, I like the way that they made it easier to camp and rest your spells so you don't have to keep, you know, just endlessly clicking every time you want to learn a new spell. You just, what was it, just a little plus and minus system. Now, let's take another look at that. Pray for spells. Yeah, so here it's just, just minus and plus, and it keeps it for you so you rest. You don't have to keep coming in here time and time again to adjust this. Now, I like that. Um... I guess the only things I don't particularly like at this point, the it's kind of hard to identify items. You know, I wish there was a way that you could have like the stats on the same screen instead of having to switch back and forth. It'd be cool if you could like have the you know actually see the stats. It'd be really nice if I could hover over this or click on it and get like a little info screen. Now, that would be cool. But those are just kind of little nitpicky things at this at this point, really. Uh, I think the real selling point, I think if you're going to play this game, what's going to sell you is just, you know, having these big dungeons to explore. Uh, all of the, you know, having the D&D &D stuff in the, into the game makes it a little bit more fun, I think, than, you know, a lot of these uh, roguelikes, because you do have the... You know, those spells to look forward to. You know, if you're a mage, for example, I guess at some point you're going to get the fireball. You know, the classic. <laughs> uh, the cleric, we got all the, you know, stuff like this spiritual uh, weapon in there. It's pretty fun to think about how that spell like that would play. I mean, I know you've, you've probably been like me playing some of these other games of the style and been thinking, man, wouldn't this be cool if I had the AD&D rules there? Uh, the cleric, the mage spells, you know, to play around with. Um, so that's, that's all fun. You know, it's really great to be able to come in here and customize the uh, difficulty exactly the way you'd want it. So if you didn't like all the, you know, not having enough food, didn't like having to worry about that, you could basically just set it so you never starve. You know. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, that that, that should be enough. You, you've seen the audio. Or, yeah, you've seen the audio. Maybe if you're on drugs. Uh, you've seen the graphics. Um, I, it feels like there's a pretty good variety. As I said, that the, uh, well, I guess I could show you this. Exit the game. That'll, that'll probably take me completely out of the game. Maybe restore game. Yeah, let's see if this will restore. Uh, my Amazon so you can get a look at the uh, one of the other tile sets. Look at these long loading times. I <laughs> Will it load? Is it frozen? Well, maybe it won't. Maybe it glitched out on me. Well, I'll just continue yakking as, as we're loading here. Oh, there's something's happening. Oh, there. Uh, so there you go, different looking tile set. So there must, you know, there's at least three different tile sets. I don't know, there's probably a lot more than that. As I said, I think I read that it's got 10, you know, levels per game. You gotta get all the way to level 10 uh, to be able to get this orb. And I, I don't know what happens then. I guess you can find out. Now here's my Amazon. So she's just a straight up fighter, which, be honest with you, it wasn't all that much fun. Uh, I think having some spells makes it a little more interesting. So you, you know, your mileage may vary. You might like this better. But anyway, back to the review. So the graphics are pretty good. You know, it is it's like 1993. This is not Ultima Underworld here. Uh, I think I'm pretty impressed with what I've seen so, with what I've seen so far, though. Uh, um, the, probably yeah, the audio is probably the weakest link. You know, it wasn't that strong, though, in the original Dungeon Master either. You know, it was kind of fun with the, you hear the thing, the monster, you're not sure where it is. Uh, I didn't really care for the, you know, <laughs> the hawk and the loogie, <laughs> uh, whatever, the clearing of the throat constantly. I don't know if that's a sound that it makes on every level. Uh, if that's the case, I'd probably want to turn the sound off, to be honest with you. Now, it would be nice to have a little bit of music, but, you know, of course, you could always play your own. Uh, yeah, help fire up some Nar Nox Arcana. Hell, play that in the background. It'd be great, just like a tabletop, like when you're playing tabletop D&D, uh, &D, sometimes a DM might want to put on a little bit of that Nox, a uh, little bit of Midnight Syndicate, you know, something like that, playing in the background. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to. 
it's uh, probably not a whole lot here to... You know, to me, this would probably be like a little comfort game you'd play every now and then. You know, get in here and play around with this. Relax a little bit, have a beer or two. You know, I don't think this is something you'd probably play obsessively. Uh, you know, at least it wouldn't hook me the way, say, Eye of the Beholder would. Uh, so I'll just end it here. I think it's definitely worth six bucks. Actually, I guess it's three bucks, considering you get this in Menzo Baranza. Uh, but I'm going to wrap it up here. I think I've seen enough uh, to make my judgment. I do want to return later to play uh, Menzo Baranza, see what that game's about. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. It'll be a little shorter than usual, but that's okay. Uh, as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. <laughs>
Uh, my plan is to, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, I've never had a Chia pet before, but my understanding is a small child could do it. I could probably do it too. <laughs> we got, we got a, little, uh, a little Richard Simmons here. And you just put the seeds on him and, uh, and I guess over the next few weeks he will start growing some, some hair. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I will get this, uh, get those seeds applied and I'll put it on the shelf here somewhere. I thought it'd be fun, you know, kind of, you could see him, uh, you could see him grow over the next uh, couple of weeks or over the next uh, couple of months. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just fun. Um, let's see, what else did I have to say? Uh, oh! Ales of the week. Uh, so you might be excited about this. If you, I know a lot of people have been saying, when are you going to do the ales of the week? You know, when are you going to you know, fill up the old drinking horn again and all that? Uh, well, I do have some, some news about that. I wanted to run it by you to see what you guys thought about this. Uh, so long story short, I've decided to take up the hobby of beer brewing. Uh, brand new, novice, <laughs> rank amateur. <laughs> you know, I got a little kit and kind of been playing around with it. Uh, but I thought, you know, I'd see what you guys thought. Would you like me to kind of talk a little bit, maybe in some future episodes about that process, show you some uh, stuff going on with that, and sample my own creations here on Matt Chat? It wouldn't be, uh, you know, it takes like months and months to make these things. Uh, so it wouldn't be like a, every episode I'd be trying a new uh, brew. Uh, but, you know, it could be fun, and it'd be a chance to see, uh, <laughs> you know, do I know what I'm doing? I'm able to follow instructions. Uh, you know, but anyway, I just thought I'd run that by you, see what you think. Do you want me to do like a little uh, microbrew sort of theme uh, segment here somewhere? Or just maybe sample the, the brews, just do that part. You know, let me know what you think. Love to hear your, your thoughts on that. Uh, all right, anyway, uh, let's wrap it up with a quotation. And I was looking for quotes about rogues. And I found one that's pretty funny by Alexander Dumas. Of course, he wrote one of my favorite books of all time, The Three Musketeers. In the way, uh, the quote goes something like this. I prefer rogues to imbeciles because they sometimes take a rest. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next time. When you're, when you're telling these little stories, here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. <laughs>